This is problem number F4-1 from Hibbler's Statics textbook, 14th edition. In this problem, we have a rigid body that experiences a force of 100 newtons. We would like to find the moment that this force causes about a point located between the rigid body and the wall. The rigid body has a fixed support at the wall which means that the wall should be able to resist this moment. Now we know that the moment about a point should be equal to the product of the force times the distance perpendicular to the line of action to the force. In this case my force is 100 newtons. So if I could find a distance from this point that intersects my line of action of the force perpendicularly, that means at a 90 degree angle, then I could find the moment by multiplying my force of 100 newtons times my distance d. However, this may seem like a bit of work, and there's an easier way to solve this problem. Instead of trying to find the distance from my point to the line of action of the force, I'm going to break down my force into its x and y components. Because finding distances from the point to the line of action of the x and the y components will be easier. In this case, my 100 newton force is acting on this point. That means that my x and my y components of the force will also act on that point. In order to find the x and y components, we just need to look at the force and look at the angle of that force. We're not really given an angle for the 100 newton force, but we are given a slope, a slope of 3, 4, 5. That means that for every 4 horizontal units, the force will move 3 vertical units in the negative y direction. The x component of the force should be equal to the magnitude of the force, that is 100 newtons, times the angle, the cosine of the angle of the force. The cosine of an angle is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. In this case, the adjacent side would be 4 and the hypotenuse would be 5. This gives me an x component of 80 newtons. Similarly, the y component of the force should be equal to the product of the magnitude times the sine of the angle. In this case, the sine of the angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, that is 3 over 5. However, let's note that the y component is acting in the negative y direction, so we'll add a negative sign to our answer. When we start calculating moments, the size of the force won't really affect us that much. So we have an x component of the force and a y component of the force. In order to find the moment that these two forces cause on this point, we need to find the distance from the point perpendicular to the line of action of the force. So let's clear out the drawing a little bit to see what we're dealing with. We have a 60 Newton force. However, that force is acting along the vertical or y direction. If we want to find the distance from our point of interest to the intersection with the line of action of the force, we just need to extend the force. Notice that by extending the force, we can tell that the distance between the points perpendicular to the line of action of the force is simply 5 meters. We can repeat this process for the x component of the force. If we extend the line of action, we find that the distance between the point and the line of action is simply 2 meters. Now we can use this information to calculate the moment about the point. The moment about my point will be equal to the sum of the individual moments that the two forces cause about that point. We have an 80 newton force acting at a distance of 2 meters from my point. Notice that this force will result in a clockwise rotation for the point. Typically for moments, our sign convention is to set the counterclockwise direction as positive. 
that means that the moment that the 80 newton force causes about the point will be a negative moment. We also have a 60 newton force acting at a distance of 5 meters from my point. Again, this force causes a clockwise moment, which means we will have a negative moment sign. Adding up the two individual moments will give us negative 80 newtons times 2 meters minus 60 newtons times 5 meters. That is equal to negative 460 newtons meters. And that is how we find the moment of a force by splitting it up into its x and y components.